and partly what brought this to my attention too was I saw this post on Instagram by 60 Minutes Australia and it was outlining the experience of a uh, the International Rugby League's decision to ban trans athletes and a trans athlete who is a rugby player and their opinion on the whole, you know, do you have an advantage? We saw in cycling, Emily Bridges mentioning that there is no performance enhancing advantage whatsoever and should be allowed to compete against um, biological females and there's no reason for this you know uproar and it's bullshit and getting um there's unfair scrutiny on trans athletes over this and this seems to be the same opinion of hannah mouncey a rugby player who previously identified as a male not long ago and is a fucking truck stick like go this video is insane to look at and for hannah to overlook the scrutiny of this whole thing and how they're the realization how would how would biological females not be afraid to get on a field with this absolute house and get fucking demolished like i don't see how anyone could overlook that uh hannah is a 100 kilogram six foot two player at six foot two and weighing 100 kilos the australian football league has ruled that hannah is too powerful to play in its elite women's competition. Good hands, Hannah, great hands. Well, look Being at the toughest player on the... Hannah walking by these individuals here on uh, on the same team. Team is a distinct advantage. Yeah, for Hannah. Good hands, Hannah. But for Hannah Mouncey, her... Absolutely insane. Do so you accept? This is the interview in question that kind of got me uh, another, I don't know, another sector of this conversation that, you know, baffled me and led me to kind of down the rabbit hole of the rugby thing. And then on the back of finding this, um, just so happened that rugby had their decision come out in June 23rd. So this was you... right beforehand or right on the back of that. This was the International Rugby League made a rule to ban trans athletes from competing in international events just days after their ban from swimming. So all interrelated and seems to be all kind of uh, getting a bit, tr bit of traction in multiple different sports except the AFL's argument that you do have a size advantage over some of your opponents. I think the biggest issue is not necessarily that I'm too big or too strong now. It's more, okay, you're already big, you're already strong, whatever, but what if you were to get into that elite training environment and they were to build you up, put on an extra 15 kilos and you just push everyone aside. So obviously that's insane to say in my opinion, given that Hannah Mountie is over six feet tall and 100 kilos as is, apparently. <laughs> Imagine as a tiny little chick. Now, again, obviously, females who are competing in rugby are probably not, you know, all tiny. They're probably the bigger, more, I don't know, house individuals are more likely to end up in the sport. But I mean, imagine... You know, what's the, the average weight for a female rugby player? I don't know. But getting fucking literally leveled by Hannah Mouncey would suck ass. I can imagine. So I would be, I can understand why there would be severe scrutiny on the current stature. Not just, oh, what if you get into elite competition and then you start taking it seriously? <laughs> like this is pretty fucking intimidating as a cis female, I would imagine. More, okay. But what if you were to get into that elite training environment and they were to build you up, put on an extra 15 kilos and you just push everyone aside? But physiologically, that's just not going to happen. The people who seem to have the biggest problem with this is male administrators. But the female competitors haven't raised their voices at all. It seems like the female competitors are pretty outspoken.